the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. It is so good to hear that again. <laughs> it's so wonderful to uh, be back together, to see people in the pews, uh, to gather this evening as uh, we come together as a parish community, um, knowing that this was a day that many of us have been very eager for, and so we give God thanks that we're able to be together in this physical space this evening, knowing also that we are joined in our live stream by all those who are at home, uh, all those who can't make it uh, into our church and who are participating and uh, united with us uh, from their homes as well. I also want to, uh, again, thank Dave and the musicians, as always, for the beautiful music. Also to say that, unfortunately, uh, we had to remove all of the hymnals from the, from the pews, right? So but I think Dave meant we've all been coming to church so often, we've memorized all the hymns, right? So if you probably memorized that exact page from the hymn book, so it's no problem for us at all. So my brothers and sisters, as we gather together as God's people, we come together on this feast of Corpus Christi, this feast of the body and blood of the Lord, this feast of the Eucharist. And what a fitting weekend, again, to be able to gather once more physically in this space to praise God and to celebrate the body of Christ. Usually, on the Feast of Corpus Christi, we have a Eucharistic procession. Of course, this weekend we're a bit limited, but what we will do at the end of Mass, as people are leaving from these side exits, we will bless everyone with the monstrance. So we'll have uh, a special blessing as everyone is leaving, we'll be able to bless, and that will be our procession for this Corpus Christi, this celebration of the body of Christ. So my brothers and sisters, as we come into the presence of our good and loving God, we turn to God with humble hearts, asking for God's gifts of pardon and of peace. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
And let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is good to be gathered together, to be gathered together. And once again, I'm just so pleased and happy that we are able to gather together here at this Mass, whether physically in this space, keeping our precautions, or whether, again, those who gather with us remotely on our live stream and who are watching this Mass with us, it is good to be gathered together. And it's certainly been A full few months for all of us has been a lot. (laughs) So we all come from our separate places, everything we've all had to deal with these last few months. The difficulties, the headaches, the isolation, the loneliness, the fear. Everything that we've had to contend with, we're all coming from that. And we're gathered together. It reminds us that... Whenever we're gathered together, it is God who brings us together. It is God who unites us together. It is God who asks us to bear our burdens together. And that's what we do when we are united. So once again, whether it's here, whether it's at home, whether those who cannot make it uh, to church on these weekends, we are all united in that one God who does bring us together. And like I said, it's been a full few months. And here at the church, I've been telling people, you know, ever since I got back, For a place with nothing going on, it's very busy still. (laughs) So I can't imagine when things really start, really start happening. Um, But again, Brother Damien and I um, have been uh, living in our house, kind of doing what we need to do, um, seeing folks here and there, whether it's people that have been coming for confession, um, whether it's we've been doing a remote Bible study with people, and again, especially coming on the weekends with Deacon Joe and the others to do our live stream masses, it's been full. It's been full. And so um, we also come to you from a very full month ourselves. I have to say, though, for me at least, coming back here to St. Thomas Aquinas, very quickly I felt for myself that I never left, right? I felt like I never left. I felt like, you know, I would see people and it just like, it feels like I've seen you all yesterday, right? You know? And I think that feeling, it's a beautiful feeling to have. And it really spoke to me that, ah, this is a true community. Because only when you've belonged to a true community can you come back after years and feel like, ah, I've never left. It's 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 home, right? Today we celebrate the feast of the Eucharist, the feast of Corpus Christi, the feast of the body and blood of Christ. And it's a feast that reminds us, number one, that in Christ, in Jesus, we are always gathered together. Whether we're in this space or whether we're not, whether we're at home, whether we're far apart 
or whether we are close together, we are always gathered together. We are always the body of Christ. And we've been coming to communion for years and years and years, receiving the body of the Lord. He has brought us together, and he kept us together, even when we weren't able to be in church. And so this feast today reminds us that if you feel you're in church today, and you feel like you never left, guess what? You never did. You never were away from the body of Christ. Because that's what Jesus does. In the readings today, in the first reading especially, God is talking to Moses and God is saying, the people, your people, feel like they're in the desert. They feel like they're wandering alone in the desert. And God said, they will feel hunger. They will feel isolated. But God said, I will give them food to eat. And God provided for them. And so we celebrate the Eucharist today. We gather together and we celebrate the fact that we have always been together. That these last few months did not divide us, even though we felt divided. But that we were, as always, members of one flesh, one body, with one Christ and one Lord as our head. There was an ancient prayer in the, um, one of the ancient documents from the apostles called the Didache, and it's something we had to study endlessly in the seminary. But the Didache is famous because it's very old. It's, it's about the year like 150, 200. It's very, very close to the time of the apostles, and it's full of things about the Eucharist and like how to celebrate the Eucharist, how to gather together, how to share the body and blood of the Lord together. And the Didache is most famous because it has this prayer. And this prayer is, Lord, as grain was once scattered on the hillside, but is in this broken bread made one. So from all lands, may your church be gathered into your kingdom by your son. You might have heard that in a song. It's, there's a famous song with that prayer in it. And that prayer speaks exactly to us today. We may have felt scattered. We may have felt divided. But we are brought into one body, into one bread, by God's son. And the prayer talks about the broken bread how this bread is broken, and certainly in these last few weeks, we realize, not just these last few weeks, but in particular, we're brought to the forefront. We're in a broken world. Our world is broken. We come from broken communities, broken societies, and Christ is in the midst of that brokenness, and Christ asks us to stay united to each other so that we can go out into a broken world and be his witnesses be his body, be the family of God. So my brothers and sisters, let us pray today. Let us pray for all those who can't be here with us today. Let us pray for all those who are feeling the brokenness of our world in a very heavy way. Let us pray that the Spirit of God, who has gathered us and will continue to gather us, will gather all the world into one, so that Christ, who comes to us in his broken body and his broken bread, may fill our hearts so that we can go out and be the body of Christ to a broken world. Amen. And united as one family of faith, let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the For Pope Francis, our bishop, priests, and all who serve the church, may the Lord strengthen them in their mission of bringing the light of Christ to a weary world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For our civic leaders and all who help formulate public policy, may the Holy Spirit guide them in all that they do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For people in war-torn countries, May God bring them peace and security. Let us pray to the Lord. For this gathered assembly, may the love and truth that God has poured into our hearts sustain us in all that we do. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have completed their pilgrimage on earth, may they find eternal joy in their heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of Francis San Antonio and Audrey Ring, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Let us now pause and call to mind our own personal intentions. For these, let us pray to the Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings that we present today, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, and united by a single bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities that are here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures in heaven and on earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection, and his ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So as we enter into this time of communion, as you can imagine, we are just going to do things in an organized, um, kind of cautious fashion. So, um, brother, um, I almost called you Brother Damien, I'm sorry. What's your name again? <laughs> Deacon, Deacon Joe. I, I know, that's right. Yeah, how, did I, how did I miss that? Deacon Joe and I will come down, and the ushers will indicate um, that you can come up out of your pew. We'll go the main pews, front to back first. That way, the ushers will indicate that the pews can come out, you can receive communion, and then just go back to your pew. Once the main pews are done, the side pews will then be indicated, and again, it'll be front to back. On the side pews, if you could, just move to the back of the church and come down the main aisle, so just again, keeping the flow of people uh, kind of in an orderly way, right? So once again, front to back in the middle, and then on the sides, front to back, but just going around to the back of the church, coming down, and then returning to your pews. And the ushers will be indicating that. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm sorry. And the kneelers. Um, the kneelers are, number one, just to give a little bit of a space between myself and Deacon Joe and, and you all. Um, we're going to be wearing masks, but that's just a little bit of a space. And then for those who would like to kneel, that's also an opportunity. If you want to kneel, you're able to do so. But it is more for that, just a little bit of a space that we can always maintain. The body prays.
And let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed by this present age, by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. So as we conclude our very first public mass in a while here, um, I just want to get, say a couple of thank yous since we're all here. I do want to thank uh, Jay Stone, who has been um, live streaming all of these masses for us with his camera. So I want to thank him very, very much for making it accessible. Um, I want to thank Dave and the musicians, again, for providing us over these last months of beautiful music. And uh, Deacon Joe, Christine, everyone who was instrumental, from our readers to um, our altars, to everyone who was serving here at the Mass. Just a big warm round of applause for everybody involved. <laughs> As we conclude, um, again, sort of we're able to leave in a orderly fashion. I want to once again thank you all for making this a safe and, you know, cautious environment. So thank you for your cooperation, uh, for helping making it work. Um, so for our exit, um, during our closing song, again, I will come down with the monstrance. And we need to just leave by these two side exits, right? So that... The front entrance is just the entrance, and so as we leave, these two exits will be where we uh, will be departing from. So once again, the ushers will be indicating uh, each pew as they, as they exit. For, the, for leaving, we're going to be doing um, the main aisle, the main pews, front to back, coming down, and then everyone can receive a blessing from the monstrance and then leave either side. And then we're going to go down the side aisles, but just to confuse things, back to front. We have to mix it up, <laughs> just to confuse things. So can't keep doing it the same way all the time. So front to back, and then back to front, down the sides, just so that, again, you can come down the back aisle and be able to go in a nice flowing fashion. So if that's clear, hopefully that's clear, but the ushers will be helping to make that happen. Let's give a big round of applause to our ushers as well. <laughs> And let us pray. I think I did that already, right? I did that already. <laughs> it's been a long, long few months. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
You're welcome. Have a great day. Jesus wouldn't forget you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. 